There's nobody more at fault for the condition of this country than red state GOP voters. The reddest states in this country give us the most putrid Republicans at the federal level. Susan Collins is understandable, Tucker. Sorry to yeah. get all fired up. It's understandable. She's from Maine. It's from a blue state. Of course, we're going to get some wishy-washy, mealy mouth dork from that kind of state. But the Dakotas? The Dakotas are so red, it's crazy. They could have somebody to the right of me if they wanted to, but they don't. Well, I saw him on Fox last night. I'll oh, just gag me with a fork. Well, apparently Rick was watching when I was doing that whole thing. He got all fired up about it, understandably. Rick Becker joins us now. I have a lot of respect for this guy. Candidate for North Dakota's at-large congressional district. You want to change DC, this is how. And again, it's freaking North Dakota. It's a former North Dakota state rep. It's not like he doesn't have a record. I love the Dakotas. He's go pheasant hunting there all the time when I was a kid. Joining me now, Rick Becker. Rick, I, I never, I'll never get it. And I don't mean to toss bombs at North Dakota, my own state, Texas. We have losers like John Cornyn. It's Wyoming. Wyoming's Republican Party sucks. Nebraska, Louisiana. Why? Well, <laughs> Jesse, thanks for having me on. So here's the thing. The the I think it's not so much about the voter, but it's about the, the party apparatus. So when you have a conservative state and they're electing more and more Republicans, they get to a point where if someone has a desire to have an elected position, right, if they're aspiring to have that, they know they must have an R behind their name or they're not going to get elected. So you have people then that don't have the conservative principles, but they have the spots. And so the way I see it is the more the 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 greater the margin that the Republicans have in the legislature, in the elected officials, the more likely they are going to send a moderate squish to D.C. And the reason for that is because you've got this paradox that when you have all of these moderates, when people are getting elected without conservative principles, you then diluted the party to not have the principles it's supposed to have. They're more inter interested in protecting the club they're in, this party. Principle is far less important. The party then is it's incumbent upon the party to send the people that represent the party, the moderate squish. And so here we are as grassroots principled conservatives fighting against the uniparty, against the big spending, big government rhino Republicans. Rick, I, I need you to explain it to me as a former state rep and now somebody running as the at-large candidate, because I went through this when I ran for Congress too, why is it that GOP leadership, whether you're in a state party or the national party, leadership moves to the middle? And I understand what you're saying about how a red state can get more moderate, I do, but why is it just automatically built in that the further you go up to the top, the more towards the middle you go? How is there nobody up there where you are? Yeah. How? Well, it's a, it's a fight. It's a never-ending fight. It's been going on for decades. Um, the way I see it is that these, these leaders, they think that they are supposed to encompass everyone who's within the party. They put the party above principle. They need to focus not on just the number of seats with an R. They need to focus on uh, forwarding policy, forwarding fiscal policy that represents the platform, the principles of the Republican Party. They're not doing that. They're trying to be big tent. They're trying to play happy to everyone. And what they should be focused on is principle. And so, yes, we as, as conservatives in the Republican Party are disappointed and let down time and time and time again. Rick, tell me about your race. Tell me about why, why you're running. What are your hot button issues? Tell people about yourself. Yeah. Well, you know, my race, this race for the House in North Dakota is, it's, it's a perfect example of what you're talking about, Jesse. So, I'm a plastic surgeon, a businessman. I was in the state legislature for 10 years as a grassroots conservative. I started North Dakota's version of the Freedom Caucus, called it the Bastiat Caucus. Was able to introduce and pass significant important legislation like constitutional carry, the Second Amendment Preservation Act, confidential informant reform, civil asset forfeiture reform, requiring search warrants with, uh, uh, for drone surveillance. Uh, requiring state agencies to include the ramifications of taking federal money. Huge, huge things. It's this type of track record for how I was able to get the endorsements of Senator Rand Paul, uh, Representative Thomas Massey, Representative Bob Good, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, at least 8, 10, 12 members of the House Freedom Caucus. Now, you contrast that to the primary opponent I have, who is is a, I guess, a, a career uh, politician in the sense that she was a political staffer 
and then a lobbyist, and then she was appointed as a public utilities regulator, uh, someone who actually in North Dakota is a proponent of renewables, despite the fact that we are reliant on fossil fuel. And she was chosen, she was selected by Mitt Romney to run his campaign in North Dakota. You've got, here's, here's where the war is. This is the fight. You've got a solid grassroots principled conservative against the uniparty rhino machine. I ask Jesse, what do you think? What, what, this no. is exactly the race. Who do you think is going to represent North Dakota the best? Backed by Rand Paul, Bob Good, and Thomas Massey should be about enough. About, that should be about enough for everybody. Those are about the only three politicians we even allow on this show. Real quick, Rick, give out your website so people can support you, please. Yes, Rick Becker 2024, rickbecker2024.com. Please take a look. I'd love the support. We got to get more fighters to D.C. if we're going to save this country, Jesse. Rickbecker2024.com. Just so everybody knows. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. Just so everybody knows. That race, that primary, is significantly more important than the general election in November. You know that, right?